And now, the number one rated show on BaseNet Internet Television, from worst to first. You're listening to As We See It, with Fred Boaz and Ed Jupin. I'm Ed Jupin from the Boston studios of BaseNet Internet Television, and welcome everyone to show number 10, our anniversary show. Our 10th show, believe it or not, second show of our second season. Welcome aboard. We want to welcome all of our new listeners, and boy, there are a lot of new listeners. Just in the past week, we have picked up several hundred new people that are listening to this podcast. So we want to thank you and welcome you on board and remind everybody that this is a interactive show. We want everybody to get involved in the discussions that we have, even send us your opinions on possible show topics that you'd like us to talk about. So please, by all means, contact us on Facebook. We're at BaseNet. On Twitter, we're at BaseNet TV. We're also now on Google+. And if anyone is on Google+, you're aware that it's not open to brands yet. It's only open to individuals. So Fred and myself are both using our personal accounts right now on Google. So you could comment and follow us, put us in your circle, and we'll put you in our circles. Either myself, Edward A. Jupin, or Fred, who is listed as Frederick Boaz. So follow us on Google+, Facebook, or Twitter, and join the interactive conversation. If you send us show ideas and suggestions, which you could do by sending us an email at info at basenetintermedia.com. If your show suggestion is used and discussed on the show, you will be named as an executive producer of that particular show. So there you go. So now, without any further ado, let me turn it over to the host of the number one rated show on BaseNet, Fred Boaz. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate it. Uh, like you said, we did go from the last place to first place because of our listeners. We do appreciate everybody coming out and listening to us and you know, stopping doing whatever you're doing to listen to us rant for a half hour or 20 minutes. It's like the uh, rantings of lunatics over here, but it is what it is. And we enjoy we enjoy doing it. We enjoy the people. We enjoy the show. Uh, it's something we've been wanting to do for a lot of years, and we finally decided that rather than running the company, we'd get behind one program ourselves and and, you know, kind of see how the other half lives and, you know, really have, have a good time. So this is done on our own time. Our staff isn't being paid. We're not being paid for it. But, you know, everybody seems to enjoy it. And it, it's, a, it's a labor of love, especially when we get everybody into the offices on a Sunday afternoon here in Swiftwater or uh, up in, up in uh, Arlington and get these guys up there doing their jobs. And we really appreciate the gang over here and the gang up there. And appreciate the listeners and thank you. And we're trying to keep it topical if we can. There you go. And that's the perfect segue into our sponsorship. I, I don't want to sound like we're begging, but we really are. As Fred said, none of us right now are getting paid to do this show. We believe that just by the turnout of listeners that we have all of a sudden for this show, it seems like people are enjoying it and people like what we're doing. Well, not so much that we want to get paid. We would like to do a major upgrade in equipment. We want to do more video work, not only us, but BaseNet in general. So to do this upgrade in equipment, all of our shows need sponsors or advertisers. So we are actively now looking for sponsors slash advertisers. So if anyone has a business, if anyone knows somebody that has a business, or if you're just Joe Listener that wants to send us a dollar or $5 just to help out our cause, we appreciate it. You could drop us an email at our special marketing email address for that, which is marketing at basenetintermedia.com, or certainly contact us on one of those social media sites we mentioned earlier, and we'll be glad to discuss with you how you could either become an advertiser, sponsor, or even just a private donator of any dollar amount to help us out and to really get the ball rolling. So, Fred, what do we have coming up first this week? Uh, we're going to get started real quick here. Uh, I got a, um, an email like a lot of people do on my uh, account here saying that uh, from Grass Fire Nation, and they're a conservative um, group. And I, again, being in the business, we have to keep our track, leg, uh, our legs open on, on all the um, stuff going on. But... They posted a video that we'll show some of the audio of later on from Morgan Freeman on Friday with um, 
Pierce Morgan, from, who is now, I think, on CNN, and they call him the next Larry King or the new Larry King. Or anyway, he taught, he launched, he launched into a tirade on um, on Friday, an anti an anti Tea Party rant, calling Tea Partiers and uh, uh, racist because they because they don't agree with the with the policies of the president. And you know, Pierce Brosnan, uh, Pierce, I don't say Pierce Brosnan, Pierce, Pierce Brosnan, Morgan, uh, 007, huh? He says, but it, 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 you know, it, is it necessarily a racist thing? And Morgan says, well, it is a racist thing. Now, I remember five years ago when people objected to what George Bush was doing, and it wasn't racist. And the one thing that people remember is that everybody you know, who says it's racist because our president is, uh, is black, well, people have to remember that his mother's white, which makes him mulatto, which is not a racist term. It happens to be a definition of someone who has white and black parents. So, you know, he's taking... He, it is what it is. He's, he's supposed to be the president for every person. And I personally don't agree with him. I don't consider myself racist. I don't consider you racist, Ed. You don't agree with a lot of his policies. I mean, not, nobody does everything wrong, so I do agree with some of the things he's done. But for Morgan Freeman to make that statement, it just it's too easy to fall back on that. And, I mean, I love Morgan Freeman, one of my favorite actors, and I respect the man deeply. But, you know, anyway, uh, we're going to play – Ed can play us a clip for it so you can understand what he's saying. Okay, um, Morgan Freeman on Pierce Brosnan on CNN. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan. Tea Partiers who are controlling the Republican Party stated, and what's this guy's name? Uh, Mitch, Mitch O'Connell. Is that his name, O'Connell? Yeah. Mitch, Mitch McConnell, yeah. Mitch McConnell. Their stated policy, publicly stated, is to do whatever it takes to see to it that Obama only serves one term. Mm -hmm. What's, what, what, is that, what underlines that? Screw the country. We're going to do whatever we do to get this black man. We can, we're going to do whatever we can to get this black man out of here. But is that necessarily a racist thing? It is a racist thing. Is it not it's, just Republicans? Wouldn't they say that about any Democrat No, because they would have gotten rid of Bill Clinton if they could have. But they if tried. They, they did least. try, but still. I, I don't. They're not, going, they're not going to get rid of Obama either. I think they're shooting themselves in the head. Does it unnerve you that the Tea Party are gaining such traction? Yes. Why? Yes. Well, it just shows the weak, dark underside of America. Uh, we're supposed to be better than that. We really are. That's that's why all those people were in tears when Obama was was elected president. Ah, look at what we are. Look at how this is America, you know? And then it just sort of started turning because these people surface is like... But no, it's just, it, it's just, it, those, those kind of things bother me because it's too easy to fall back on that. You either like the president for who he is and what he does. And if you don't agree with him, that's fine. But not agreeing with someone, not agree with the president is a not only is, is your right, but it's your responsibility. Well, if I, if I could, if I could cut in for a second, um, there's posts on Facebook, and uh, I, I personally, only because up until now, when we're going to start having somebody else more than likely doing our social media for us, but I've been doing it personally. So since I've been 100% re uh, representing BaseNet Internet Television, I have never posted, or once or twice anyway, other than once or twice, I have never posted personal opinions on our social media accounts. Which I can say that. Um, yeah, and that's what I was going to say. That's where I'm going with this. I, I've noticed on several occasions you have and again, to play the devil's advocate that we love playing, on the several occasions that I saw you post that, they were pretty derogatory comments or pictures against Obama. And yet you have also said, and you've, you were leading into it now, but I just didn't let you get that far, that people should respect him. He's the president and respect the position of president and, and so on and so forth. Um, 
you, you know where I'm going, but, but yeah, you know, yes, everybody's got the right to free speech and you can say what you want about the president, but is it right to post what I almost consider derogatory pictures or comments about the president, even if you don't like him? Maybe, maybe a comment should just, and I'll turn it back over to you in a second. Maybe people should just say, instead of derogatory things, just say, you know what? I really don't agree with a damn thing with this guy. And I'm going to work my ass off to make sure he doesn't get reelected the next election cycle. Uh, you know, something like that. Well, no, I agree with you. But you got to remember, I also posted the same stuff about George Bush when I didn't like what he yes, said either. Yes, you did. That's right. And you got to remember, I don't play that game. And, you know, right is right, wrong is wrong. And my objection to what's going on in Washington comes from what I see happening, what the record is, what the, and what, what the man's doing. White or black doesn't matter to me. And when George, when I felt George Bush was wrong, I also posted that and said that. And nobody called me racist. They just called me an idiot or whatever the situation. And I, I, I don't like that either. I mean, I had people go after my family because I posted things that they didn't agree with. And I don't think that's right. But neither, I mean, it could bring up a lot, a lot, a lot of subjects that people have. You know, the birth certificate issue from the birthers and the whole bit. That doesn't come from racism. It comes from the fact that in the Constitution, it tells you that someone, in order to be president, ha in order to be eligible, has to be a minimum of 35 years old, a resident of the United States for 14 years, and naturally born in the United States. And that's pr that show means throwing your birth certificate. It is what it is. But that's basically, you know, I mean, this is not a racist issue. It's written in Section 2 of the Constitution, and that's what they're doing. But, you know, and what, 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 what you know, what Morgan Freeman did was a personal opinion. He's, you know, he's smiling through the whole thing. And it's just too easy to fall back on a racist issue and, and take apart all the other issues that are going on for racism. But anyway, that's how I see it. I, there's not much I can say about that. Okay. But, so what else is happening this week? Well, the Mets apparently uh, are going to be re-signing Ter uh, manager Terry Collins, uh, renewing his contract for another year or so. But you know, they did actually did pretty a, a pretty decent job this year so maybe we'll yeah they, see weren't, them. they yeah. weren't in last place they were next to last well that's okay that's better than last sure it is. and yeah i mean it's and I, and I laugh i've been a mets fan as you know for the last 40 years and people laugh about that and all the yankee fans uh tell me you know why are you a mets fan well you know you gotta be a fan of your team and it's easy to be a fan of a winning team but you know the mets they're my team and i wish them all luck in the world and i enjoy you know i enjoy when they when they do well and I enjoy when they, you know, and I and I I like and you enjoy when they don't do well. <laughs> I, I like I like to I've I've gone out to the stadium either time. It doesn't really matter, but the big the biggest thing the biggest issue for me though is the um, the talk about Michael Jackson's doctor and the uh, the fact that he's being put on trial for uh, causing Jackson's death. Yes, and I think people have to understand something. If this had not been Michael Jackson, this guy wouldn't be on trial, and. You know, I mean, the guy's being charged with, with, with contributing to something. This, this kid, Michael Jackson, has been dead, you know, been, dead, what, a year or two years? Uh, like, what, three years now or something? Three years now. Yeah. But what happened that he he insisted this guy give him stuff. And I'm reading, there's a thing here on uh, Yahoo from Los Angeles talking that the doctor uh, is in charge of Michael Jackson's death says a singer caused his own death, that he had uh, self-ingested uh, profanol, a uh, Propofol, I guess you pronounce it, and you know the doctor said the doctor gave him stuff that he would have gotten anyway. Now I don't condone that, but you know if the guy they get these guys, you and you and I've been in the industry, been in the business for a lot of years. We've seen these guys do this. We've seen guys come off the bus uh, on a road car at eight o'clock in the morning with Jim Beam coolers in their hands, and these guys have been drinking all night long. You know, these guys do it to themselves, and they have to, someone, someone's got to take the responsibility to tell these people, hey, stop. No one in Michael Jackson's camp looked at him and said, Mike, this stuff's going to kill you. You know, you got to stop and find another way of doing this. Sure. And nobody, nobody does this to these people. Same thing with Elvis, you know, the king of rock and roll. None of his people sat there and said, Elvis, if you keep taking these pills, it's going to kill you. But yet you got all these guys, you know, and. You know, nobody's nobody's charging his handlers with uh with, with, with giving him the pills. Mm -hmm. But you know, Michael Jackson, self-proclaimed king of pop, and I don't say he wasn't, because he died, and his family thinks that just that 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 justice needs to be done. He's gonna take this poor guy and 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 um and hang him. And then well, so what, what do we know? Did he? Where did he get 
the drugs? Well, you well, know, I don't know where was he got this the doctor drugs. not involved then? I didn't say the doctor wasn't involved. I'm just saying that, that Michael did that the family then, that, that nobody showed culpability. But I, I believe his death was ruled a homicide, wasn't it, or was it not? I don't remember. I really don't. But I think, it, was, I think it was then you're trying to find the person that committed the homicide. No, I don't know if just, the, they just throwing this guy under the bus then? Yeah, I think I think I think because of who it was they are. That's my own opinion. I said that you know that that he create they, they talk about him creating a perfect storm that created instant death. He wanted this stuff. He was going to get it no matter who gave it to him, and the doctor gave it to him. So that makes the doctor culpable. Sure, makes the doctor, you know, a an accessory. But Michael Jackson had you know the, the Jackson family needs to take some responsibility for this. They gave him whatever he wanted. They were feeding off of him. They were sucking down his money. They were eating his food. They were living in his houses, you know, and. I mean, this this was shown right after he died, where people are sitting and trying. They're fighting over the money off the estate. So, I mean, I'm not saying that 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 he shouldn't be that the doctor shouldn't be charged. I'm not, but he shouldn't be charged with murder. He should be charged with manslaughter, maybe. Right. So, I mean, I just think you know, Doctor Murray, you know, you know, he what he did was stupid. He was trying to make a buck, taking care of Michael Jackson. And Michael asked, "This is the stuff I want." And the doctor said, "Okay, fine." He gave it to him. And but nobody sat there, but nobody in his family stood up and said, Hey, don't give this to him and you know, don't get him off this stuff. They were all right behind him, letting him take it. Absolutely. And you know, and now now he's gone and we don't have and none of that music that he was able to make, none of that stuff is ever gonna be made again. So we all lose out. Oh well. Well, on our next show on Sunday, we will be doing our regularly scheduled show on Sunday. It'll be show and, 11 of As We Say It. And rumor has it that we have a guest coming. It has been confirmed that uh, Larry Marks, Larry the Lobster of Holly and the Lobster fame, will be joining us this Sunday. He's got a couple good topics that he wants to discuss. Very good. And unless we have a technical difficulty... You know, whenever we're bringing somebody on for the first time, they might not have everything just set perfectly, and we might run into a problem. But barring the technical difficulties, he'll join us. We are also, as we discussed last week, looking to bring on Holly Hurley or Jessica Moskowitz and some of our other BaseNet people to uh, make this a much more interesting show as opposed to just listening to myself and Fred. And also, Fred, I believe you have an announcement about our video, um, ver video version of this show. Yeah, should be coming up in two or three weeks. As soon as we can get everything, you know, again, we'll get all the bugs worked out of it. But it'll be, and hopefully by then we'll have a, a bit, uh, some, some, we'll have a new announcement maybe, a uh, new um, uh, intro and a whole bit. So we should be getting pretty well good. Very good. Okay. So, pretty well good. That was, that was real well English. So before Fred wraps things up, I know he wants to uh, just mention something that came over to Wires this afternoon. I guess we have somebody in the industry finally retiring. Yes. And I say finally because when Fred announces this, you'll understand. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I love the yeah. no, I love him. You got to love him. So, again, we neglected to say this last week, so I'll double up on it this week. We want to make this interactive, so please follow us on Facebook, at BaseNet, on Twitter, at BaseNet TV, on Google+, Plus at Edward A. Jupin or Frederick Boaz, and we'll be glad to follow you, put you in our circles, and you put us in your circles, and you'll be able to follow us on the uh, Google Hangout, and then we will be doing our live stream on our own site in a couple of weeks. So lots of good things coming up. And also our 20-minute format, which we're right about there right now, our 20-minute format seems to work. So I think we're going to try to keep each show to around 20 minutes, and uh, we just move things along. So, Fred, why don't we go close things out? Okay. Every week we know, you know, we've been closing out with the uh, announcement of, a, of someone in the industry who's passed away. And we're very happy to announce this week that no Nobody one Nobody died? That we, that we know of. No one <laughs> passed away. But uh, CBS uh, has announced that Andy Rooney of 60 Minutes is, reti is semi-retiring, put it that way. And he will not be doing his segment at the end of 60 Minutes every week. And I'm sorry. I mean, one person is going to miss him because, Andy, I love that stuff. Maybe we'll bring him on a pace and let him do, let him do something for us. How uh, old or young of a gent is he? Man. 92. 92. So 92. he's not retiring. He's just not going to do his show on a regular basis anymore. 
I don't, you, I don't want to do the show on a regular basis now, and I'm nowhere near 92. Yeah, well, he has better <laughs> subjects than we do. I guess Loving so. people's shoes and glasses. And, but, no, nah, but you got to love Andy Rooney, though. Absolutely. Andy great. He's the best, man. I'd love to have, I'd love to have, I'd love to do a show with him if I could. So, yes. Yeah, so, Andy, we wish you, from all of us here at BaseNet Internet Television, a happy, happy semi-retirement. From the studios of BaseNet Internet Television, just outside of Boston in Arlington, Massachusetts, I'm Ed Jupin. And from the corporate offices in Swiftwater, Pennsylvania, telling Andy Rooney, hey, look, you want a job? We got a place for you. I'm Fred Boas. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Have a nice night.